Hey all, I'm Apoorva and welcome back to Videsified. On our channel, we have made a lot of videos about studying Masters and PhD in the US, but today we are going to discuss about postdoc. Most of the PhD students who want to pursue their career in academia go for postdoc after their graduation. And there is very limited guidance for people who want to pursue postdoc in the US. And that is why we are going to talk to Sylee Lovaker, who is a final year PhD student in biology and currently going through her postdoc application process. So let's go talk to her. But before that, if you find our content helpful, then please like this video and also subscribe to our channel. Your every like, comment and subscription really motivates us to keep making these useful videos. So subscribe to our channel and press that bell icon right now. Welcome Saili, thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you so much for inviting me again. Um, I was definitely very excited about sharing my PhD journey and now I'm going to share the last leg uh, of my PhD, mainly doing postdoc ap applications. I'm still learning myself too, but uh, a lot of the people who are at the final leg of their PhD and also hoping to do a postdoc in the future, I would love to share whatever I've learned so far. Thank you so much, Saili. Um, so Saili has previously talked to us sharing her PhD journey. So if you haven't watched that video yet, you can watch it here. So Saili, um, could you please tell us about what all career options does a PhD student have after the graduation? Yeah, so there are a lot of options that you can apply to after your PhD, but the main ones is basically divided into industry and academia. I'm leaning towards more academia, so that's what I know a lot more about. But um, what comes with academia is mainly if you want to open your own lab and answer a research question that you're interested in, then there are certain steps. But one of the important steps is getting a postdoc. So how important is postdoc to go into academia? So um, I think when you're a PhD student, you have a research question already that's in mind with that you work with your mentor for and you're building your career more of like the critical thinking and analysis, experimental design, which you probably either know already or hone on. So I think as a postdoc, it's important to do, to do a postdoc because obviously getting research articles and establishing yourself as a scientist, should, it, it's more of like a proof to people that you're doing really well in your career and you're building on that. And also it helps to get a postdoc because you become more independent and you can pitch in your research ideas and write grants based on that. And to know more about grants, you can refer to the previous video uh, that I talked about um, with grants, but mainly that what career path you want to form and what niche you want to form in the scientific realm. Uh, postdocs are really important because then it gives you a fair idea of which direction you want to go and what, if you want to open a research lab, what uh, is your niche basically. So then can people apply for the postdoc position directly from their home country or they have to come first to the US, pursue a PhD and then only they can apply for postdoc? Like how does it work? Yeah, so that's definitely a great question. So you can definitely come uh, from your home country to do a postdoc here. And so the visa situation is a little different um, compared to a PhD. And one more thing that is different could be that your eligibility for different grants but uh, one most important thing is that how they are shortlisted is based on their skill sets and how they match up with the lab. So it's very subjective, but overall you have to say how you would be qualified for that is how, how much you know from your PhD, how much you have gained the research articles that you've gotten from that, and also like overall the awards and things that you've applied for, these definitely help to strengthen your profile and that makes um, the mentor more confident that as a postdoc this person would be a good fit. So definitely they look at your overall resume along with uh, the skill sets that you have. Mm -hmm. So definitely you can apply from your home country given that you have correct experiences and the skills that required for that position. So then Saili, uh, what is the application process like for the postdoc? Yeah, so it's different than your PhD process. Um, one important thing is you need to know what research you want to do after your PhD. Um, having those skill sets already is definitely helpful and that you can carry forward, but you want to look at a postdoc which will help you in your career as well. So it goes both ways. It's not just something that they will offer you, but also you can offer them. Uh, and that's a better fit because then it helps you get a research article sooner in your postdoc in initial years, and then you can apply for grants which are eligible for international international students 
and um, the way I shortlisted was based on like whenever I went to conferences, I, I was aware of who were the bigger names and which labs I was interested in. And um, I wrote them an email and followed them, followed up with them. Uh, we can also check on Twitter where you can know what research is going on and then which particular lab you're interested in and then write an email to them and see if they're looking for postdocs. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it can be uh, a proper process where you have a proper application um, that you have to do through a portal um, and they open these interviews for everyone. So you can see this through Twitter, through ads in the university, through conferences there are ads for postdocs. Um, but there are also informal ways that you can do this. So if you're interested in a particular lab, you can also always like send them an email, show them that, okay, this is your profile, this is what you're interested in, send them a CV. And then they'll say, okay, you know, we are looking for a postdoc. So um, this either aligns with their work or if they have enough funding, depending, mm -hmm. depending on different factors, they will let you know if they're interested or not. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then uh, what is the application process? Uh, like what, are, what is the application package basically? Do you send any letters of recommendations or just like an informal email or like how, how does that work? Yeah, so with the application portal is pretty straightforward. Okay. So you have your basic information, the biography and all of that. And then you put your cover letter and letter of recommend, recommendations or you usually put like, like an email okay. of two or three uh, recommenders in that uh, application. It's mainly your cover letter and your resume which goes into that so this is more of like through the portal but informally it the other way would be you would write an email and the email will comprise of the cover letter entirely so um, there are many points that you have to consider while writing the cover letter so based on that they will uh, connect with you and see if it matches so what goes into the cover letter like what is the format of this cover letter yeah, so obviously it could be subjective, but the major chunk pretty much remains the same. So in the first paragraph, you sort of introduce yourself, why you've written the email, and you say that which university you're affiliated with, which lab you're from, and when you're planning to graduate. The next paragraph is more of like you are being specific as to what exactly drew you to their lab, and what you are main interested in and what is the research idea you want to contribute matching it up with their interests then at the like in the same paragraph you would mention about the different um, state of the art techniques that they have and the machines and things like that that you can have access to the resources so that just shows that you've done the research um, and then that will help in your profile that okay this is the techniques that I'm not learned so I would love to gain it from mm -hmm. your lab so that's or the second paragraph. Third paragraph would be talking about what research you have done and how it sort of aligns with their work. And also like elaborating a little bit more. So I would, if there's a particular research interest that aligns with your project, and probably you must have done multiple projects, so you want to make sure that you put the project that aligns with their interest first so they see it and that catches their interest that okay this is something that she he or she can contribute to the lab, lab right away and can contribute from day one so you have to show that that you are confident and uh, you, you have done enough research and kind of selling yourself uh, to the lab next is the fourth paragraph will be talking about the different awards or different fellowships that you have gotten and overall elaborating on that to show that you're a good fit and you're still learning and you're growing as a scientist and um, working hard towards that and the awards kind of help you leverage in that case and lastly you would like to thank them and see if they would want to consider you for that position if there's a position available so yeah that's that's basically saying it off with the cover letter and one last thing i would like to say is mainly the second paragraph is where it kind of changes uh, with different labs everything else pretty much remains the same so you want to be aware that you are changing it according to the labs that you are applying to and doing the right research for it um, that shows that you're actually interested and what research idea you can pitch in and you've thought about things that they that align with their interests so then what is the timeline of this application and acceptance yeah so for the application usually takes eight to ten months so you would want to start applying way ahead of time in your last year 
Um, the reason why I say that is because like certain labs are waiting for funding and if like because postdocs can like switch their jobs whenever so you never know when, when a position opens up so it's always better to start way ahead of time and that's why I give like a timeline eight to ten months and then you have like a informal meeting with them like a zoom call to see okay are you really a good match for them somewhere are you really focused um, the research questions that you're asking are they lining up with their interests and do do they like the questions that you're asking so ma the match is definitely very important because it's as I mentioned it's a two-way street so it has to be not only they benefiting but you also benefiting and you advancing your career so after the zoom call there is more if they're interested then they see your um, interest lining very well with them they invite you for an in-person interview and it's like a entire day session where first you give a presentation that could last like one to one and a half hours depending um, and then at the end you have the questions and then you basically have individual meetings with the different faculties probably who will, you will collaborate with and also the lab people to see if you kind of gel with them and at the same time you, you also have to gauge that do you gel with them also does that fit for you because it's important it it doesn't have to be something that just research because there's so many other aspects that come when you're going to a lab and to advance further everything has to fit well so definitely um, you have to go in those in person don't just accept an offer just because you do, did a zoom interview you have to go in person in the interview with them and then after that they'll let you know two three months depending uh, if you have been accepted or no one thing that um, I forgot to mention also is um, with shortlisting of the the, uh, the PIs or mentors that you're interested in, there is a resource called as NIH Reporter, um, and this is helpful because it gives you a fair idea of which grants are active for those particular mentors and how much funding they have, and the active grants help you in writing your cover letters also, because then you know okay maybe uh, they are question like the articles that they had before were way different than what research they are doing now and the collaborations probably line up with your interests now so it definitely could be a better fit so I think NIH reporter did help me in that shortlisting of my professors. So is it recommended to uh, pursue your postdoc in the same university where you have completed your PhD or like continue with the same PI or like what's the situation like like what do students usually do? Yeah so I think um, since I want to go into academia in the future, usually it's not recommended to stay in the same lab. Um, the reason for that is you want to build on your skill sets and gain more knowledge also and broaden your horizons and having that like holistic experience is definitely very important um, for a faculty position in the future. Uh, situationally it could differ sometimes people do postdocs in the lab because they have some finishing experiments or like if there is a project that they can finish up sooner then they would pursue a postdoc in the same lab just for a few months um, but that's not something recommended it's just situational so I would say trying for a different lab is much much better than doing the same lab just to build on your own profile so Sairi, uh, tell me how many labs should one apply to for this postdoc, like what would you recommend? Yeah, so it depends on your overall research profile um, and how well you have done in that. Um, people apply to 2-3 labs and get accepted, but I have tried to keep my options open and done at least 7 to 8 applications, um, keeping the research in mind. Um, right now I haven't thought about which state or region I want to go to because research is the most prior thing but you also have to think about the other things like if uh, not just research but like life balance is also something that you want to focus on you want to be aware that okay if, am, am I okay to go to a bigger city am I okay to go to this and the, the overall living because um, that's equally important so these are the aspects that you need to be aware of and one more thing that you need to be definitely aware of is sometimes um, certain labs have like big, more people so it's a bigger lab and some are smaller so depending on how you want to fit on those um, you want to see if a small or a big lab will be a good fit for you because sometimes the bigger labs have 
postdocs who are the leading people and then they lead graduate students and then the hierarchy goes for graduate students and undergrads so it could be a lot lot of responsibility right away when you join and that could be overwhelming so if you want to build your research profile maybe smaller could be a better fit for you than a bigger one so make the choice according to what your preference is and be aware of the research question as well along with the region this is great information and i'm sure that it is going to help a lot of students who are thinking about postdoc so thank you so much for giving your time and sharing this valuable information with our audience and uh, all the best for your postdoc journey and beyond i know that you're going to achieve great great things in the future so all the best and thank you thank you so much and uh, i'm glad that i can contribute some way and help people um and again it's something that i'm still learning also so if people have some feedback in the comments you should definitely put it there and thank you with asifide again for inviting me i really enjoyed both my interviews and i'm happy to help more if there's something that i can contribute to thank you sai thank, thank you, you. Much. so that's all we have for today i hope it was useful we will come up with more such videos soon if you find this content helpful then please like and share this video and if you have any questions then you can ask us in the comment section we will reply and make more videos answering all your questions and don't forget to subscribe to our channel until next time take care keep learning bye bye